Hello, my name's James Moores. I've been working as a voiceover artist for the last couple of years, and with one or two exceptions, most of my work so far has been as a narrator of audiobooks. I'm now looking to expand into other areas of voiceover work, and most people in the industry advise you to provide a short description of your voice on websites and agencies sites for potential clients. As you can imagine, it is difficult to accurately describe your own voice, but also to get unbiased description from people who know you well. Sometimes, even knowing what a person looks like can affect how their voice is described. For that reason, I'm asking you, complete strangers, to do me the favour of listening to this recording and the two very short audiobook excerpts that follow, and then to describe my voice using only three adjectives in the comments. Thank you for taking the time to listen and to comment. In January 1945, Frau Elena and the last four girls living at Children's House, the twins, Hannah and Suzanne Gerlitz, Claudia Forster and 15-year-old Jutta Fennig, are transported from Essen to Berlin to work in a machine parts factory. For ten hours a day, six days a week, they disassemble massive forging presses and stack the unusable metal in crates to be loaded onto train cars. Unscrewing, sawing, hauling. Most days Frau Elena works close by, wearing a torn ski jacket she has found, mumbling to herself in French or singing songs from childhood. They live above a printing company abandoned a month before. Hundreds of crates of misprinted dictionaries are stacked in the halls, and the girls burn them page by page in the potbelly stove. I didn't really want to tell Sewell about the concentrated little knot of vestigia that clung to the murder weapon, but I figured it would only lead to more trouble later if I didn't. Sir, I said, that's the source of the weird bollocks. How do you know? asked Sewell. I considered explaining vestigia, but Nightingale had warned me that sometimes it was better to give them a nice, simple explanation that they can relate to. It just has a kind of glow about it, I said. A glow? Yeah, a glow. That only you can see, he said. Presumably with your special mystical powers. I looked him in the eye. Yes, I said. My special mystical powers. Fair enough, said Sewell. So, our victim gets stabbed in the tunnel with a bit of magic pot, staggers up the track looking for help, climbs up onto the platform, collapses and bleeds out. We knew the exact time of death, one seventeen in the morning, because we got it all on a CCTV camera. At one fourteen, the footage showed the blur of his white face as he pulled himself onto the platform, the lurch as he tried to get to his feet, and that terrible final collapse, that slump down onto his side, the surrender. 